next time you have brunch, you should give this a try. I'm making what I call a dog cake. It starts off with a splash of milk in the blender, followed by two hot dogs, cotton candy, mac and cheese. There's only two things guaranteed in this life, boys and girls. One of them is death, and the other is the fact that people will always be posting their absolutely horrendous cooking on the internet for the entire world to see. At least, uh, I think that's how the quote goes. Today, we are revisiting what might just be my favorite TikTok cooking account, Calibro's Kitchen. Now, some of you might remember this guy from a few months ago with the TikToks we watched like the meat cookie, you know, where he stuffed a chocolate chip cookie full of spam. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff we're going to be dealing with today. So if you have a weak stomach, maybe, maybe uh, run along now, okay? Now, the only redeeming quality of this TikTok account is that everything is bad on purpose. This guy is like a genuine chef and he uses his knowledge to make things that are just absolutely terrifying. And you know what? I'm in full support of that. Another thing is that he actually eats the things he creates. He's not just out here wasting food for TikToks, throwing away everything once he's done recording. He actually tries it. He's doing it for food science, which we all know is the most important branch of science. So you know what? It's really kind of hard to complain. But you guys know me. I'm still going to find a way to. So uh, let's begin. Please subscribe. For Chris Kitchen Part 14, I am making cotton candy mac and cheese. There are only two ingredients, some Velveeta shells and cheese, and I couldn't find cotton candy, so I'm using cotton candy to animals. You know what? For some reason, I think I would actually prefer him just to have used cotton candy. Something about making making macaroni and cheese with animals is triggering some sort of primal response within me. Not a fan. I cooked the shells in boiling water, and then I strained them, and then I added the danimals, which looks very sus, then I added a nice glob of Velveeta cheese. And then I wang jangled the two until it became a nice saucy sauce. And then I plated it up. You don't really want a soupy mac and cheese and this was very soupy, but so is life. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because what I'm worried about when I'm about to eat cotton candy mac and cheese is the soup factor. Yeah, I'm worried about the liquid content of the mac and cheese. Not that I'm about to eat what might just be the worst flavor profile combination ever thought of. Yeah, no, 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 the soup. That's where my mind's at. So yeah, then I mixed it a little bit more and then took a spoonful and tried it. Honestly, it wasn't bad on the first bite. It was cheesy and a little bit sweet, but my lord, that cotton candy flavor kicks you in the back and oh my god, it's so disgusting. I definitely like the chocolate mac and cheese a lot better. Okay, so um, first off, did you just say chocolate macaroni and cheese? <laughs> Surely not. No. No, I just hallucinated that. Let's move on. I like how he said it's not bad and then the cotton candy just kind of hits you while he's literally visibly vomiting on camera. Like, yeah, he said the cotton candy is gross, but that's a bit of a further reaction than just kind of gross. So I'm sure you've heard of an everything bagel, but have you ever heard of a everything eagle? The first thing you want to do is give this warm water a little bit of a yeast infection. Wow, that's a choice of words. That's undeniable. And since this is a reverse everything bagel, I'm using the everything bagel seasoning to use as flour for the dough. I combined both the everything flour and our yeast infected water until it became a nice dough, and then I let it proof for about 40 minutes. The dough is super dense, but it kind of looked promising. I cut the dough in half, rolled half the dough in my hands, and then I started to form the Bogussi. Okay, Mr. Calibro, we're gonna have to have a talk. On the August the Duck channel, we like to keep our programming child-friendly, okay? So if we could, if we could cool it on the Bogussi talk, that would be splendid, all right? After forming and stretching the Bogussi- What did I just say? Wow! We're really just racking them up, aren't we? We need like a Bogussi jar. I mean, you think you know and respect a man, and then he just starts dropping Bogussies on the table. Come on, we're better than this. I put it in a pot of boiling water for about three minutes, took it out, let it dry off a bit, and then I added some egg wash and some chopped up bagels on top. I then put it in the oven for about 15 minutes, and then we took it out of the oven, looks nice golden brown. I cut it in half, added some cream cheese, and there you have a everything eggel. I didn't really know what to expect when biting into this, but it was very dense and cakey. But it definitely tasted like an everything bagel, but there's no way this is good for you. Well, I mean, it's not like bagels in general are really good for you to begin with. But I imagine that this is not good for the mouth department because on top of this being probably the most dense thing a person can eat, there are like charred slivers of bagel on top, which will definitely cut every single surface of your mouth. So uh, have fun with that. So you heard of chicken and waffles, but have you ever heard of Wiccan and Chaffles? 
So you start by adding some chicken, an egg, and then a little splash of water, and then blending it up. You know what? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that literally nothing that has ever started in that manner has ever turned out good. Meat in a blender is where I draw the line in pretty much any circumstance. All right, a nice fruit, sure. Wanna make a soup a little more soupy? That sounds like a great idea to me. A chicken breast? No bueno. And then put your chicken slurry into a bowl and then add some milk, some powdered sugar, some vanilla extract, some flour, and some baking powder. And then whisk it all together. And then put your chaffle batter inside of a hot waffle iron until it gets nice fluffy golden brown. All right, so I'm gonna level with you guys. Uh, I have never made a waffle that is composed of blended chicken, but if I did, I feel like there would be no real way to know if the chicken was cooked to the correct temperature. Jokes aside about this being gross or not, I'm actually curious if this is actually safe to eat. To make the wicken, I start off with some flour, add some homemade chicken seasoning, as well as some water and egg white. And then I whisk it together. And then I use these little Christmas Santa and snowman molds because they kind of look like chicken shapes, I guess. Well, that is definitely a statement. I've got to be honest though, just speaking from personal experience, I have never seen a piece of chicken and thought, you know what, that looks like a Christmas ornament. And I threw it in the microwave to cook. They came out looking like this. And once you batter them with some flour and egg, it kind of just looks like some seasoned chicken pieces. So then I threw them in some hot oil to get nice crispy golden brown. Then all there's left to do is to plate it up. Every bone in my body is telling me that these would not taste very tasty. I mean, it's just egg whites and chicken seasoning. Like that's, that's not gonna make it taste like chicken. I don't know, I, I just don't like this. You start with the chaffle and then dust it with some powdered sugar. And then I added some brown sugar and bourbon whipped butter. And then I added our Wiccan pieces on top, followed by a nice pour of some cayenne maple syrup. And there you have Wiccan and chaffles. And honestly, I gave this a taste because you know I had to, but it seriously just tastes like chicken and waffles. There is literally no difference between chicken and waffles and this. Really good though. I really don't know if I can buy that. I bet the waffle is fine, okay? I mean, you might have to get past the fact that you're eating blended chicken, but hey, no big deal. I've had McDonald's chicken nuggets before, been there, done that. But like the chicken flour things, those, those just do not seem like they'd be right to me. I need to try this. The next time you have brunch, you should give this a try. I'm making what I call a dog cake. It starts off with a splash of milk in the blender, followed by two hot dogs and one large egg. All right, as far as I'm concerned, this is already grounds for a felony. This is not cool and it should certainly not be legal. Just the mentioning of hot dogs in any recipe is already a big red flag. You're tossing those bad boys into a blender. Do you enjoy freedom? Clearly not. You're gonna blend them together until it's a nice slurry and then put it in a mixing bowl and then add some little bit of milk just to thin it out and then add in your self-rising flour and give it a whisk. If it's too thick, add some more milk. And if it's too runny, add some more of the self-rising flour. Then in a hot pan with melted butter, add in your mixture and then cook it as if they were just normal pancakes. If you are a human being who can ignore the fact that you are cooking blended up hot dogs mixed with milk and you can pretend that it's just a normal pancake, you need to be studied. I got a cookie cutter out just so I could make nice uniform circles so I could stack them together. To plate the dog cakes, all you do is start off with your bottom layer, add some mustard and then pickles, and then add another layer of dog cake, followed by some more mustard and pickles, and keep doing that to the end, and then douse it in maple syrup. I gave this a try, and honestly, this is so delicious. It's smoky and sweet and you get a nice briny from the pickles, I would honestly eat this if it was on a menu. That is information that the FBI and the CIA combined could not get out of me. There is nothing on this planet I would not do before admitting that I enjoyed eating a blended up hot dog. That's never happening. Well guys, what do you think? If you had to choose a single recipe to eat from this video, which one would it be? Personally, I'm gonna have to go with the Wiccan and Chaffles or whatever he called it. His reaction kind of made Made me believe that maybe it is kind of good. I might also try like the Beverly Thing Eggle, but the other two, uh, no. That's, that's never gonna happen, okay? If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and walk on over to that subscribe button and touch it. It's free. It won't cost you anything. But for now, that's all I have for you today. Bye.
Subscribe.